Good afternoon and welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to get Home Assistant set up and installed on Proxmox using Proxmox's new graphical user interface import feature. That's right, we're going to be able to do more of the Home Assistant setup and install right inside of Proxmox's web interface. Unfortunately, at this time, Proxmox's web interface in the import disk feature hasn't developed fully enough that we will be able to entirely use it. So there still will be some command line steps, but they're going to be greatly decreased. So let's first start by heading over to the Home Assistant page for installation directions for Linux. And we see that we have two options that appear for download. The first is gonna be KVM and that's gonna be the one we're using. We also have VirtualBox available to us, but like I said, we're gonna be using KVM. Then let's right click on it and copy link address. If you're using Windows or Mac, you should have an option with similar terminology. Now that we have this path pasted into our clipboard, let's head to our Proxmox web interface and log in. Here's my Proxmox web interface. And then let's go to our local drive and make sure we have import enabled. If you don't already have import enabled, you're going to need to go to data center. Then you're gonna to need to select storage and then you're gonna select your local drive and you're gonna press edit. And at this content dropdown, you're going to highlight import just as mine is done. And then you're gonna press okay. Now that that feature is enabled, you can see that we have the download from URL feature here. If we select that and then paste this here and press query URL, everything appears to work. But when we hit download, we get this error message. And that's because this is a compressed file. It will run with QCOW2, but since this is a compressed file, it won't work. So with that, we're gonna close this window. We're gonna select our node in my case PVE, and we're gonna select shell. Here at the shell window, we're gonna CD to var lib vz import. This is the path and folder that's created inside of our Proxmox system for the import feature in our local drive. Since we're here, we can just run an LS and you can see that same noble server cloud init AMD raw image that was brought in for another tutorial and actually runs a fair amount of my setup currently here today. So with that, we're going to then hit wget space and then we're gonna right click and paste. Some browsers will allow control V to work my browser won't. Once that URL has been pasted, we can hit enter and we'll download our file. And with that, our file is fully downloaded. And now we can once again hit LS and you can see that we have a qcow2.xe. And unfortunately, just like I said before, that's a compressed version of a qcow2 file and unable to work with our import disk feature. So we're gonna highlight this name, we're gonna right click, and we're gonna copy it. Then we're gonna type UNXZ, a space, and we'll go ahead and paste the name. Then we can press enter, and this will decompress our file. With our file decompressed, we can again enter LS, and we can see that the file has changed to QCOW2. At this point, we're good to close our command line. With our command line closed, we can go to local import and you can see that our home assistant image now shows up. Now let's go and start creating our VM for the rest of this process. To do so, we're gonna click create VM and we're gonna give it a name. I'll call mine home dash video today. And if you don't have these advanced settings, we can go ahead and click on them. We're gonna hit start at boot. We can add tags if we so choose. I won't be using any today. And we can hit next. Then we can select do not use any media. Next, we can select QEMU guest agent, which will allow Proxmox to communicate with our VM once everything's set up and going. Then we can select under BIOS, and we can select under BIOS QEFI and we need to select the disk where we're gonna store that image, and then we're gonna deselect pre-enroll keys. Then we'll press next. For disks, we're gonna delete this one, 
Then we're gonna press import. Then we're going to make sure we see local here and we're gonna select our home assistant image. And I like to select discard. This isn't necessarily an important feature, but if you have an SSD, it can help increase the life of your SSD. Pressing next, we're gonna give this two CPU cores and I like to select host. I find this gives me the best performance. Pressing next, let's give this four gigs by entering 4096. And we can cut this back to two gigs by changing this line if we so choose. Now we're gonna press next. Networking, make sure that you're on the right bridge. I will be changing my bridge here today for my particular setup. Yours may be VMBR0, which is the default setup. It all depends on your network configurations inside of your Proxmox server. Pressing next, we can go ahead and make sure everything's set up right, and we can hit finish. Now Proxmox will take a minute to create our VM. You will notice this process takes a little bit longer as it has to import the QCOW2 image into the VM. Once the VM name appears, you can select it, and we can look at hardware and you can see that the hard drive has been added here and everything should be set up correctly. You can see we have an EFI disk because we set QEFI up. Under options, you can see our boot order is configured correctly. So we're ready to go ahead and start the boot of this particular VM. We're gonna select console and we're gonna hit start. With that, Home Assistant will boot up, and now we have Home Assistant up and running. We want to take note of this port 8123, as we're going to need to use it to access our Home Assistant server. Now we can head to Summary, and since we enabled the QEMU guest agent, we can see our IP address right here for our server. Mine's going to be 192.168.13.6. Yours will be different. Now we can open a new tab on our browser. We can enter that 192.168.13.6 and our port, which is a colon, and it's going to be 81.23, and we can hit enter. Now we're given this screen, and Home Assistant is preparing. I'll be back with you with our next steps. All right. So I'm back with you and here's our next steps. Since we're gonna be starting a new server today, we can hit create my smart home. We're gonna give it a name, a password, select create account. You can give yours an address if you so choose. I'm gonna leave mine in Amsterdam. Select a country, select if you wanna share any information with Home Assistant. I'm gonna leave mine all turned off and press next. Select okay the fact that it found some devices on my home network and press finish. At this point, we're logged into Home Assistant and we can start using it and following some of the other tutorials that are available online for doing things like integrations and whatnot. One thing that you're gonna want to note during the setup process is you will want to go ahead and set a static IP address. You're gonna do that by selecting settings, then you're gonna select system, then you're gonna select network. Since we're here in the United States, we're gonna select IPv4, and we're gonna hit static. I'm gonna leave everything that was filled in by my DHCP server, but you may wanna change yours depending on your setup. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Now I have a static IP address configured. Now we'll just go ahead and go to overview, make sure everything's working, and we are solid in communicating with our home network. And you can see that even with hitting refresh, everything is working. So we have a solidly configured static IP address. At this point, your setup is going to be fairly unique to your own particular house. But if you go to settings, and you go to devices and services, you can start to see some of the devices that were auto found, like my Deco, which looks like it failed to start up and reply. It's probably because I have another Home Assistant server here or it's initializing right now. But you can go ahead at this point and select some of those other devices here. You can look at some of your devices you can add integrations like we can add Wiz here and we can enter an IP address. Usually devices like this will auto detect if they are available 
to Home Assistant. So I hope you find some of our, our other tutorials on Home Assistant, as well as many other tutorials for fully setting up your Home Assistant instance on YouTube. And I'm gonna conclude this video as we have fully completed the installation process of Home Assistant using Proxmox's newest GUI features. As always, have a good night and please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing for more virtualization and Proxmox content.